Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video, we're going to check out a software control surface for Mac and PC from Keith McMillan Instruments called the Cuneo. The Cuneo offers an impressive amount of control as each of the 27 pads, sliders, and rotary sensors is pressure, velocity, and location sensitive, while the 17 switches are velocity sensitive as well. In addition, its 251 multicolor LEDs allow you to see what's going on at a glance, which is very helpful, and let's face it, they look pretty cool during a performance. It's versatile as well. The Cuneo works with USB, MIDI, and OSC. Let's check it out. This inexpensive plastic controller is the same size as an iPad, but even lighter, weighing in at under a pound for ultra portability, and it connects to your computer via its mini USB port, which also supplies it with power. I actually put it in my backpack this morning and did a double take on my way out the door because it felt so light, I had to make sure it was actually in there. We tried it out on a MacBook Pro, and the installation was fairly painless. You go to the website, download the installer, and run it. You can MIDI map the Cuneo to your DA or software manually using its controller mapping assistant or coma mode, but it ships with templates for a number of popular software programs including Ableton Live, Serato, Tractor, Reason, Logic, and more, including Beatmaker and the Korg IMS20 apps for the iPad. If you're using it with the iPad, you'll need the iPad camera connection kit sold separately. In terms of the layout, a big portion of the real estate on the Cuneo is for the 16 pads. As I indicated, the pads are velocity sensitive at a resolution from 0 to 127, and they respond to continuous pressure changes as well. But what's really interesting is that they also respond across the XY axis for additional controls. To give you an idea of how the pads perform, let's take a look at preset 9, which is programmed for launching clips in Ableton Live. In this mode, each side of a pad controls a track in Live. Track 1 is my baseline, so to trigger the first clip in track 1, I hit the upper left corner of the first pad. I've got three clips available to me in this track. The one playing is lit up with a green LED on the Cuneo. The other two are lit up amber. If I trigger the second clip by hitting the lower left corner of the pad, that corner lights up green. On the right side of the same pad, I can trigger the clips in track 2, which is the synth pad. This continues until the right side of the fourth pad, which in this preset is set up to launch clips on the seventh track on its left side, but uses its right side to trigger scenes. Additional rows are for mute, solo, and track arming. Now, of course, you may have more than seven tracks. By using this bottom row of cursor buttons, you can move the Cuneo across banks of tracks, and this red box indicates which tracks are currently under pad control. This cursoring feature also controls the four vertical sliders on the bottom left of the controller. So with the red box around these seven tracks, the sliders then control volume on the first four tracks, and the LEDs on the sliders light up to tell me where my volume levels are. Now the way this preset is mapped, when I select a track in Live, these four horizontal sliders give me additional controls over that track. The top two sliders are set up for effects, the third slider is set up for the pan, and the last one is a volume slider. The rotary controls are set to adjust clip lengths. Now, just as you may have more than seven tracks, you may also have more than four clips in your tracks, and you can move the red box on the session page lower and higher to focus on the clips you want to work with using these up and down arrow keys. This long slider at the bottom is set up as a crossfader, while transport controls are up here, and these keys have been set up to change the tempo. So that gives you an idea of one preset for live. Let's press the preset button here in the upper left and switch to preset 10. Also set up for live, but instead of launching clips, preset 10 takes the pads out of grid mode and puts them into drum mode. So now the velocity sensitive pads trigger drums on the drum rack and the impulse 8's sample cells. Preset 11 is set up to perform a similar function with Apple's Logic Pro DAW, turning the Cuneo into a drum synth controller for the Ultrabeat plugin. Preset 14 is mapped to the battery plug-in from Native Instruments with the two left rows of pads set up so you can adjust the cutoff and resonance of the filter by moving along the XY axis, while the rest are in grid mode, allowing you to trigger a different sound on each of the four corners. The rotaries are set up to trigger loops and will change loop lengths according to location, while the pressure sensitivity is mapped to the filter. You can adjust the sensitivity of the pads and other parameters in the Cuneo editor, and there are drum style emulations included designed to simulate popular drum machines.
In addition to working with DAWs, the Cuneo is a wicked, lightweight little DJ controller for laptop DJ software, including Serato, Mix, and Traktor. Preset 12 is set up to work with Traktor, and once you import the template into Traktor, it works very nicely. The bottom row of pads controls deck A, the row above controls deck B. Both these rows have the pads in drum mode, while the two upper rows are in grid mode. So the corners on this third row allow you to set and select cue points on deck A in the lower half and deck B in the upper half. The top row of pads is set up to change the loop sizes of both decks. The two vertical sliders on the left are set to control volume levels for the decks, while the two on the right are set to control the monitor volume and the mix blend in the cues. The effect wet dry mix is set to the lower horizontal faders, while the two above are for the filters on the decks. Tempo controls for each of the decks are right here beside the long horizontal slider, which is set to control the crossfader. I was quite impressed with the Cuneo as a DJ controller, and one of the reasons I liked it so much is the fact that the LED display gives me so much information that I don't have to look at the computer screen as much. I can see with a glance to the Cuneo if a deck is playing, whether the sync function for the deck is engaged, volume levels, and more. The pads that trigger the decks light up in time with the beat, Saturday Night Fever style, and the rotary LEDs will also rotate in time. So if your beat matching is off, you'll not only hear it, you'll see it. So the presets for the Cuneo are excellent, but at some point you'll want to customize the controller to control some specific parameters. Now because the pads and sliders can send multiple MIDI control messages at once, your software may get a bit confused when you start MIDI mapping. To help remedy that, the Cuneo features Coma Mode, which again stands for Controller Mapping Assistance. Let's go back to our live clip launching preset and map the XY function of pad 4 here to parameters on Live's flanger effect as an example. To use the XY functions on a pad, it has to be in drum mode, so we'll select pad 4 and turn grid mode off. Next I have to set controller numbers on both the X and Y parameters. As soon as I start to dial in a CC number, the screen shows me which CC numbers are already in use. But rather than worry about that, I'll simply put this pad on its own channel to avoid any overlap. Looks like only 3 and 9 are in use, so let's put this one on channel 10, and I'll dial in 33 for the YCC and 34 for the XCC. I want the parameters to stay where I leave them after my moves, so here on the XY return, I dial in latch. Now, when I make these changes, you'll see the save preset light blink, so save it and update the preset, so the controller itself knows you've made a change in the editor, because as of now, the Cuneo doesn't auto-update. Maybe that will be a change with a firmware update down the line. Hold the upper left button for one second, and the pads will flash, and the button is lit up blue, and you're in coma mode. I put live in MIDI map mode and select the delay parameter, then hit the lower left corner of the pad to map that to the X axis. Now I select the feedback parameter and map that to the Y axis, and that's it. I'll take live out of MIDI mapping mode, take the Cuneo out of coma mode, and I'm in business. In terms of negatives, some of the preset mappings I tried out had one or two functions that weren't working for me, but you can easily fix that by manually mapping them yourself. The feel of the sliders and the pads took some getting used to, but when I cranked up the sensitivity setting, I got better action. Setting up any controller can be a bit of a chore initially, but once you do, the Cuneo offers you a lot of versatility. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of some of the features in the Cuneo controller from Keith McMillan Instruments, an ultra-portable light-up pad controller that offers touch recognition in multiple dimensions for drum programming, DJing, VJing, performing, or any any number of other uses that future DIY hackers are no doubt working on right now. I'm Rob from BH and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.